All right, and at this time, I would like to turn things over to your moderator, Christina Cleveland, Senior Director, Talent Development Solutions at Canadian Management Centre. Thanks so much, Erin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I'm absolutely thrilled to be with you to talk to you about this topic of being strategic in uncertain times. Um, we love this topic because it's certainly something that many of us struggle with on a daily basis for a variety of reasons, um, but in a lot of cases we actually may be more strategic than we think. Um, I'm not alone today, so I'll be introducing um, our facilitator for today's session, but before I do, um, just want to welcome uh, those of you who are participating today from across the country to today's session. Canadian Management Centre is a national organization focused on preparing the next generation of leaders to thrive in tomorrow's marketplace. Uh, for those of you who are new to us, we do deliver open enrollment programs across the country, as well as sessions inside um, our client organizations. Um, but we, for those of you who have um, been to a webinar before, we're really excited to welcome you back. Uh, if you are going to be participating today on Twitter, you can join the conversation with us and you can follow us. Our handle is at Canadian Management and you can use the hashtag CMC events to follow along with insights from today's session. You are going to also get access to a recording of today's session, which will give you a visual uh, of the slides and also allow you to uh, recall some of the insights that we'll be sharing today and some of the tips and strategies. So you can look out for an email after today's session that will give you those details as uh, well as additional details related to um, the course promotion. So I'm excited to welcome Candida Fridman, a facilitator with Canadian Management Centre. Candida has actually been a facilitator with Canadian Management Centre since 2011, and her focus areas are in leadership, management, as well as strategy. Uh, she brings extensive international experience, uh, having worked in over 25 countries as a global leader herself, and has been actively involved in planning and managing uh, and implementing strategy uh, in a variety of different organizations. Um, and today works with her clients, as well as Canadian Management Centre clients, both in our open enrollment programs as well as our corporate learning solutions to deliver um, this uh, topic, um, as well as a variety of others. So, Candida, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Christina. It's great to be here. So, I'm going to pass things over to you to get us started. I know we've got a very full agenda. Great. So, um, the first thing I want to start out is with the slide, as you can see, as it says, you need to be more strategic. I myself found this a really hard thing to hear when I started my first job where I had to think strategically. And I realized this is a topic that scares people. And yet, at the same time, everybody is already thinking strategically in some way in their life. Yet, it's something that comes up. Why, why is this topic come up so much? Why am I asked a lot about uh, how you can get more information on being more strategic? Often, in, uh, it's feedback from performance reviews where your boss will say to you, you need to be more strategic. And people think, what does that actually mean? And then the, the skills, the strategic skills that come up are a continue, continually a major part of people's initiative and the skills that they want to get better at. In fact, in 2013, there was a research conducted by the Management Research Group and a large-scale global study of what were the key elements of highly effective leaders. And the study looked at over 60,000 managers and executives in 104, 140 different countries in many industries. And when asked what was most critical for their organization's future success, strategic was chosen 97% of the time. So it tells you right there that having a strategic mindset is crucial for businesses today. In fact, it's more crucial today than any other time that we've dealt with. So we've got a poll for you that we want to look at. Which of the following best represents your work life? There's uh, some things to look at. If you want to click on the one that, that fits your area best, is it a feeling of being overwhelmed? Is it constant firefighting? All is operating smoothly or zen? So the poll is going to open up on the right-hand side of your screen. Please go ahead and click on the radio button that and select the option that is uh, most related uh, to how you're currently feeling uh, that it represents your work life. Um, and then go ahead and click on the submit button so that we can record all responses. Um, and we're really interested to get uh, a perspective today. These are our 
often uh, emotions and responses that we hear from participants who come to us for our strategic um, planning courses as well as our developing a strategic mindset courses. And many of them show up as reasons why um, they're not able to get to that you know, really exciting strategic thinking and planning work. And I know from running the strategic planning and developing strategic mindset and even critical thinking courses where it starts people on the road to thinking a little more strategically, constant firefighting is one that comes up so much that people would love to be able to think more strategically, but they're so busy putting out those fires, every, every being reactive at work as we come along. And I can see so far from the results that that seems to be one that, that's coming up quite a lot as well. Uh, the, the people ask, how can I think strategically when I'm put in a position where I'm constantly having to deal with these reactive issues that come up on a daily basis? Yeah. And it's a great point. So it looks like 50% uh, of us participating today have selected constant firefighting as um, a, a current representation of our work life. And second place was feeling overwhelmed, 31% indicating feeling overwhelmed. 15% of us are operating smoothly, and three are in a zen state, so well well for done. Them. Yeah, for those of you who are um, operating smoothly in Zen, we'll welcome your um, your comments and insights today uh, through the chat panel. We'd love to, to hear from you. But I also want to acknowledge you for um, continuing to develop yourself and uh, and to look at new Absolutely. ways to, to approach this. Um, and for those of you who are in the constant fireway, firefighting and feeling overwhelmed um, phase, we have some strategies for you today. In fact, it fits very much to an article that was recently at the Harvard Business Review that cites VUCA, as, as, it, as they, they quote it as saying, a trendy managerial acronym that's a catch-all for, hey, it's crazy out there. So as you can see, VUCA standing for volatility. If you think of what's going on in the world right now, the volatility, a great example would be the price fluctuation of oil prices. It's so many businesses that I'm involved in, this affects them. And, and so being aware of what's going on, they need to know how to deal with that. Of course, uncertainty is another issue that people are dealing with. Thinking of the new competition that's out there. Think of right now Amazon buying uh, the Whole Foods. Amazon in so many different environments. Uber and the taxi industry. It becomes a question of the uncertainty. What's next? What's going to happen? Complexity. Things that are at play right now, looking bit between Canada and the US and we're dealing even with the NAFTA, the free trade agreement, what's going to happen the politics with, that are going on around the world, which creates a lot more ambiguity, the unknown. What is going to happen? How can we read into things as much as we used to? There's an exponential growth in so many different areas that it's pretty difficult all the time to think strategically and think, where should I be looking at next? Oh, and to not feel that you're out of date, I guess, too, with the amount of movement that is constantly happening and, and um, like you said, the uncertainty that's created as a result of that. Absolutely. The environment is changing so rapidly. You think of the technology industry, social media, um, what is going on out there that if you're not moving forward, if you're not thinking about the future, if you're not thinking strategically, that's where the trouble lies because we all have to be thinking much more strategically in order to get ahead in business today. So I think we'd love to uh, get some feedback from all of you um, today through the chat panel. If you wouldn't mind, just select the option to respond to all panelists and give us a sense of, the, of how VUCA is showing up in your uh, work environment. So what VUCA scenarios are you currently facing? The things that are volatile, creating some uncertainty or complexity and also ambiguity um, in your work environment. And I love that you brought up the Amazon um, example, Candida, because I think we're hearing a lot from people too about artificial intelligence and what role that's going to play in changing the, the future of work. Um, so go ahead and, and please everyone select uh, in the chat panel and send us your um, feedback about VUCA scenarios that you're currently facing at work. Um, we'll give it a moment for um, details to come in. And uh, we did hear some feedback that you were struggling to hear Candida's mic, so we're going to make some adjustments over here. Um, but Candida looks like the responses that are coming in say unionization and employee engagement, mm -hmm. an uncertain daily supply, a wave of retirements, and a loss of highly skilled workers. Yeah, that is something that I've seen in a lot of the classes that uh, we're doing here at CMC, the discussion of the, the changing work world and the retirements that are happening and also the vision that organizations are, are having now, how to have that clear vision when there is so much 
changes that are going on, the engagement of employees. One minute people are working from home, then they're back at the office, then involved in social media at work, how much of that should be going on. Changes in the strategic direction of many organizations, in particular those in Canada right now with all the political issues that are going on from you know, the other countries. So again, these are all very interesting scenarios that have, that have come up and we really appreciate the, the comments that you've been making on those. Well, I think it, it certainly justifies the, the constant firefighting um, uh, selection for many of us when you look at these issues um, holistically and on a macro level. Um, there's a lot happening to disrupt our work environments, um, create change in the um, scenarios of what we're working with, and we're people, right? And there are individuals that are responding to this and working through their own emotions, too, as things start to become a, a little disruptive. Absolutely. Whenever you're dealing with people, which is what is going on in the work environment, we need to think about that along with all of the other issues that are going on, as stated from the, the policies. And it's interesting, I've worked in the oil industry for over 10 years, and a few people have mentioned about the different oil prices and the changes in different economic in the provinces here in Canada. And I've watched it, and, and it's very interesting to see that the strategic mindset that is taking place in that industry is helping them focus and deal with the issues that are at hand. So what's important is people always wonder, so where do I start? Where do I start with thinking strategically? And there are three areas to really concentrate on. It's more about the planning stage, so being better at strategic planning, being better at strategic thinking, and of course, without communicating your strategy, it's not going to get any further than that. And if you can see on the slide, as it says, there's that sweet spot right in the middle where you're doing a bit of the planning, a bit of the thinking, and a bit of the communicating. Now, in a perfect world, you would like to fill those three circles to the brim, but going too much in one direction over another with all the volatility and the uncertainty going on can lead you in the wrong direction. So what we try to do at CMC is be very practical and give you the skills so that you can get to the point where you understand that sweet spot and what you need to focus on. So looking a little bit further in, that, in those three circles, what do you need to do to be better at strategic thinking? For strategic thinking, a key is to be big picture thinking, to think about the vision, to think about where's the organization going, going, what are the goals we want to have, how do those goals work with what is going on with the environment, with the world out there. We also need to be thinking about long-term future. Long-term is a very interesting point now when uh, running courses on strategy, people always ask me, what does long-term mean anymore? It used to be that we would be planning five, 10 years ahead. Nowadays, even six months to 12 months ahead can be considered long-term in certain environments. Another key is about problem solving and decision making in your strategic thinking. You need to be able to think about what problems might come up, what decisions might we have to make, and be able to make those decisions. So again, one of the problems is people get caught in the thinking about all of these things without actually making any decisions. And strategic thinking doesn't just involve thinking about it, it involves where are we going to go, what are we going to do. Strategic planning, one of the other circles, involves going a little bit deeper into setting the goals, aligning to the vision, the mission, the values of the organization. Where are we going again? What are we doing? And there's a, very, uh, there's a variety of different steps that can take you from goal setting all the way down to action planning, which again is a crucial part because another question I often get is, there's so many things to look at, where do I start? Where do I finish? And having a step process, which is what we do here at CMC to take you through this and to find you, to get you right to that sweet spot is going from setting the goals all the way to the actions, and then figuring out what resources do we actually need and how do we allocate those. And that's the key to strategic planning. And again, you can do everything about strategic thinking and strategic planning, but if you don't communicate your strategy properly, it doesn't really go anywhere. 
And I always hear about these people. I, I don't know if you out there, it would be interesting if, if uh, you had this where people have said, oh, I knew this was going to happen five years ago. I could have figured this out. Or a lot of people are these amazing uh, um, thinkers to what might happen in the future, but they don't do anything about it or they don't communicate it properly to their own organization. So it's great to be a thinker, it's great to be planning it, but you need to communicate it in such a way that everybody understands what you're talking about. So as you can see with communicating your strategy, you've got to be able to communicate that to everybody, multi-directional, up and down in the organization to colleagues, and speaking the right language. I often use the term, speak into somebody else's listening. You need to make sure that somebody can hear what you're saying. You might have the greatest idea in the world of where you should go, but if somebody doesn't understand it, you're not going to go there. I think that that's a, a, a great opportunity. Just um, one of the participants, Anna, has indicated that um, you know one of their challenges that's creating a VUCA scenario for her is a lack of communication about changes in their organization from senior leadership. And I think that's a beautiful tie-in to the strategic component because you're absolutely right that it's about you know strategic thinking and encouraging a particular mindset, but the communication needs to be up, down, and across the organization. So you know when we're not getting what we need, we also need to um, find the courage to manage up and, and try and influence to get the insights or the information that we need to be able to do our jobs effectively. Absolutely. The, the issue about lack of communication about changes is something, again, we hear a lot about here at CMC. There are so many organizations that spend so much time thinking about the changes, planning the changes, but then they forget to communicate it in such a way that everybody's strategy in all the different areas of the business will all align to those changes. So it's a great point and something that is, is we, we talk more about in the course on communicating strategy because you need to be able to connect those dots. And another part to connecting those dots is to make sure you ask the questions. If somebody's not telling you the information you need, it's up to you to think, what questions do I need to ask of them? So if you look at the um, three areas, strategic planning, strategic thinking, and communicating strategy, and you have the sweet spot there, you can see how VUCA is involved in all of those areas as you look around. Um, in strategic thinking, we have the uncertainty. Willing, uh, we need to be able to think about the future differently from the past. A lot of organizations, we can all think of those companies that got so caught up in how they were doing and in the past that they didn't look at what was happening in the future. Think about Blockbuster Video, a great store, but yet didn't think about what was changing in the industry. Netflix was coming along, uh, Crave TV, all of these things that were going to, um, were going to make, it, make it difficult for them to stay as they were, and yet they were caught up in the past. There's the ambiguity in strategic thinking of how different people and different people in your organization will interpret the data with a view of the big picture. You can look at you can begin, you can look at statistics in a variety of ways. And if the senior person at your organization is looking at one way, and somebody else in the organization is looking at another, how do you get to that strategic thinking that you want to have in order to grow the organization? Strategic planning. There's a lot of volatility thinking about the planning with organizations, that what do we need to do, the fluctuation in the environment, but also looking at the changes that are taking place, the volatility that, it, that gets involved in your planning. And communicating the strategy is, what does clear direction mean for a lot of people? Clear direction in the organization involves making sure that everybody understands and knows the direction you're going. I ask the people out there to go to their teams and say to them, does everybody know where we're going? Does everybody, is everybody on page for the same? Do we know what direction we're headed? And see what they say. So, Candida, there is a question that's coming in here um, asking, do you need to be at a certain level in the organization to think about strategy? And again, in the old days, I remember when I started work and almost we were told, 
just do your job. Don't think about anything else. Well, those days are long gone. Now, in every organization that I'm involved in, they want everybody at every level to think strategically. That way, the organization can grow. And what I've discovered is you can learn just as much from somebody who's been there one day, one week, as somebody who's been there 20 years, because they're looking at it differently, which is what your strategy needs to be look, needs to focus on these days. And I think that that's an excellent point just to tap into to diverse thinking, experience, um, you know, what, what people are uh, analyzing in a particular scenario or what people pick up on, like the opportunities that exist to just sort of tap into the whole is just so great and significant for organizations. Absolutely. And I think that the important part for everybody who's listening and to pass this on to your colleagues is it's okay to be thinking strategically and to make sure that you set up the time to think strategically because that way you can be more involved in your organization and that way you can take things further and make things happen. So do we want, do we want to go uh, open up another poll to get some feedback um, from all of you just to get a sense on how you would rate your organization's strategic skill set? Um, so give us a sense based on what um, Canada reviewed with you as it relates to the overview of strategic planning, strategic thinking, and communicating strategy. How would you rate your organization's current skill set? So option A is that we're, we rock, we're in the sweet spot, we're doing all of this really well. Um, B may be that you're on the right track, so strong in, in two areas, but could um, use improvement in a third skill set. And feel free to qualify that with um, comments in the chat panel once you click on your option. Um, needs improvement is option C, and then D is a, a, sending out an SOS signal, which so we need to hone the entire strategic skill set. So do go ahead and select the option that uh, connects for you, click on the Submit button, and then um, you can definitely put in some context in the chat panel uh, to help us out um, in understanding and interpreting uh, the responses that we receive. Uh, so Aaron, we can go ahead and, and close out the poll uh, just to get a sense of the results. And, I'm wondering, since we had some people in the zen-like state, maybe we do have individuals on here who may give us an indication that they rock and they're in the sweet spot of uh, leveraging your strategic skill set. Um, so the poll has closed. We are just in the process of summarizing the results to give us some insight um, on where you'd rate your organization's uh, skill set. It looks like the majority of you, 54% today, indicate you need improvement. So we show strength in one area, but uh, need work in the other two. Uh, and 32% of you indicating that you're on the right track. So I'm just going to switch over and take a look at the chat panel to see what kind of comments you have for us. So looks like communication. Yep. Heather, you've, you've summed it up beautifully there. Communication is our Achilles heel. Um, so many people all echoing that communication tends to get bottlenecked um, at different levels in the organization. So we might be good at thinking and planning, but poor at communicating. It's very interesting that there are lots of people out there who like to plan a bit, think strategically, but don't communicate it effectively. And there's some great points that are, that are uh, being put on the screen right now about communicating up, down, and across. Oftentimes, organizations think they're communicating well because at one level, they all know what they're doing, but they haven't bothered to explain it properly to the other levels. So communication and also thinking outside our own job uh, are needed. So again, getting people to see what's going on in other areas of the organization that can help them think more strategically. But there seems to be a very strong indication that the communicating strategy is stopping a lot of organizations from getting towards that sweet spot. Well, and I think that this is where we have to call on our, our uh, relationships and our influencing capability inside of our organization too. That you know, again, one of these things that we don't make time for is to network and build relationships and get to meet people. But that is going to be something that is going to absolutely support you in developing more of a strategic mindset and enabling your uh, ability to be able to collaborate across the organization. I love what somebody has written up here, which is, our team is very strategic, but no one seems to be good at mind reading. <laughs> and I, 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 it's such a great point that people are thinking, I'm thinking this way, can't everybody else figure out what I'm doing? And you're absolutely right. In every organization, that idea that we aren't communicating and we aren't getting this through to everybody else is a very common theme. So if you think you're doing well with a strategic, you need to, it's strategic thinking, strategic planning, you need to be really thinking about how can I make sure that this 
strategy is communicating effectively. And as I use the term again, how can I make sure I'm talking into other people's listening? So they will listen to what I have to say. So they will listen to how our strategies can work together so that we can align all of the areas of the business together. Because again, um, moving organizations closer to that sweet spot, that strategic skill set where we have the sweet spot can yield higher organizational results. So better revenue growth, better customer satisfaction, more innovation, and isn't that what everybody wants? So that doing that at the same time, you're gonna also increase employee engagement, which was an issue as we talked about earlier, getting the employee engagement. Everybody would want to be involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just wanna make a comment. Um, there's a note in here from one of our participants, whose name happens to be Christina as well, who um, says, I think organizational leaders would be surprised to learn that there are challenges with communication. So they do communicate, but it's one directional and after the fact. And I think in the state of um, you know, the strategic view, but also in change, um, CMC conducted a research report last year on the impact of change in the workplace. So I'm gonna ask one of my colleagues, my CMC colleagues to maybe um, put the link for that in the chat panel so that people can get access and download it. Uh, what we found in that research is that only 19% of organizations were successful at implementing change inside their organization. There was a lot of feedback to leaders and senior leaders in the organization as it relates to alignment and communication strategies, um, which seems to be a, a big gap um, based on what we're hearing today. So I'll ask one of my colleagues to uh, put that link into the chat panel so that you can download and access that report. It's a great right. insight to be able to share um, inside your organization. And there's also a neuroscience component within that too on how change impacts the brain and um, you know, how all of this disruption is really impacting our ability to think at all, let alone strategically. Absolutely, absolutely. We're being asked to think strategically, but there are things that are closing down the ways that we can do that. So that's great, Christina, that's great. So what can you do? And uh, here are a few strategic thinking tips that might help you uh, on the way. Number one, getting multiple perspectives. So what can happen, and, and this is a part of critical thinking as well, that we can often get caught seeing the same situation, the same issue, the same problem in the same way. Think about how you go to work every day. Most people take the same route, probably listen to the same music, and they have a very similar plan of what they're going to do. And the key is to think about how else could I do this? Thinking strategically involves using your whole brain. I like to call it whole brain thinking, big picture thinking. And in order to do that, you wanna get different perspectives, different ways to look at the information, the context, or the solutions. I'm sure some of you have heard the term of having your unconscious biases, your, your way of looking at things. And we can all get very caught up in our biases. We don't even realize, hence the term unconscious bias. So by involving different perspectives, asking people to look at things differently, you have a better opportunity to think strategically. Which is why if you look at, I mean, think about Elon Musk and the different things that he's done. I'm sure that if he hadn't talked to a variety of people in a variety of different areas, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing. It's coming out of your comfort zone, getting other people to look at things a little bit more. So the other key there is also to listen what people say because uh, I'll just throw this out to you is, there's probably people out there that say, I ask a lot of different people. I, I look at things from different perspectives and ask other people's advice, but do you actually listen to what they say? So one is asking, looking at the situation from a different angle. The other is actually listening to what people say if they're looking at it differently for you. Another tip that's good for strategic thinking is to consider the multiple time frames. Often we look to solve a problem with a solution that addresses the immediate need. But sometimes we have to step back a little bit and think, what about in one year, in two years, in five years? We might consider a different solution as optimal. Again, if you look at um, the industry, the oil industry, and what's going on there with electric cars, I mean, I, I just saw on the, the news the other day where they were talking about uh, creating the first electric airplane. 
I don't know about you out there, that kind of freaked me out a little bit. But then I thought, that is somebody who's thinking strategically, because we're still thinking about the electric car. We're still thinking about the driverless car, and yet they're taking it that step further and thinking, okay, we've already started on the car. Let's go bigger. Let's think about planes. So that's if we that's where we go from one year to two years to five years to 20 years. So that way we can look at different solutions for the problems that might arise. In fact, we might even define the situation differently. We might even think, what else do we need to do in that amount of time? What else needs to be done? I, I Again, I always think about social media and how far that has come in such a short amount of time. And the people who are thinking, six months, a year, two years ahead are the ones who have already figured out where we're going with the technology for tomorrow. So again, if we look at the different ways in the strategic planning, uh, we need to be thinking about how we can generate a wide range of options before deciding what we do. And as I mentioned earlier, we can often get caught, what, else, what very often happens with people is when they're trying to decide what to do, they'll come up with one option, then they might come up with a second option, and then they tend to stop because that's hard work, thinking of two different ways to look at it. What we really need to do is generate many different options before deciding. And this is where innovation and creativity and brainstorming comes into play. We need to have ways that we can generate options that we hadn't even thought of. And how do we do that? We've got to do it by, um, by asking other people, by, by looking at things uh, in different colors, in different angles, in different ways. Think about when you were at school. Did you always sit in the same desk to hear the lectures? Did anybody move to other sides of the room and all of a sudden from the other side of the room they thought, wow, I'm seeing things and I'm hearing things I didn't hear before. So again, the idea of moving and looking at the different options can help you think more strategically. And going along with that, it's being open to the different options. So if you're at a meeting, and at that meeting, somebody comes up with something, it's not for the other people to say immediately, no, we tried that 10 years ago, it doesn't work. It's about thinking, okay, what else can we do? And what else? And what else? opening it up. So we've got a, a, a question, same question, similar question from two different individuals, Canada, so if you don't mind, I will just go there. Um, so Jeffrey and Julie are asking, um, you know, sometimes the more options you have, the more difficult it might be to decide. Um, so do you have any suggestions on this? Yes. In the effective, de effective decision-making course that we run here, it gives you some great ways to look at that and uh, of how you can narrow down those options. I've never been a person to believe the more options, the more difficult it is. I'm always a, a person that thinks, okay, if you have all these options, what you would then want to do is break it down into possibly your top three, your top four, and from those top three or top four, think about what's most important to you? What are the priorities for an organization? One tool that we use in the effective decision-making course is to come up with a two-by-two two matrix where you can look at, for example, very popular in organizations would be the ease of implementation versus um, the impact that that will have. That can help you if you then look at all the different options and you plot them in your matrix, you'll figure out which one would be the best one for you. Or you might figure out there's a few that you could do. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. And just um, so generating all those options gives you access to that diverse um, way of thinking and involves your team too and gets a lot of different perspectives. It can really be a helpful tool as it relates to engagement. Um, but the reevaluating then those options and having people look at them with a focus on you know whether or not it's going to be helpful in achieving your ultimate goal and then also how likely is it to happen, right? So. I think the suggestions that you gave there in terms of looking at a matrix would be useful. I do want to add to that one thing, which is never put the other options completely away. Because remember what we talked about earlier, that you want to look at things at multiple time frames. One option might not work today. It might work in five years. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of all the options for anything. 
Another planning tip for uh, making sure that you're thinking more strategically is to be ready to adapt to changing conditions and adjust your plan. So if you think of Uber is a great example of that. So Uber came into the taxi world and there were some taxi companies in different countries who immediately went on strike. Get rid of them. Let's go back to the way it was. The organizations, I, I was recently in New York and I noticed that in the New York taxis, they've adapted how they are, how they are in their words, fighting Uber by adjusting how their strategy of how they're getting uh, customers, how they're working with clients. So the taxi companies that have embraced the changes happening and adjusted the plans accordingly are the ones that have moved ahead, while others are still saying, it's not fair, why is this happening? So I think you know what, what you're identifying within that, though, um, Candace, is certainly an opportunity to evaluate new ideas, but um, you know, the adaptability piece isn't necessarily about going off and chasing shiny things as well, right? Like you've got the strategy and you want to make sure that you are in a position where you can um, focus or have some focus, but you've got some flexibility built in there so that as conditions change, you can adapt and pursue that, but you're still on strategy. Absolutely. You stick to the strategy, but you think other people are doing things a bit differently. What do I need to do to adjust? Uh, for example, the food industry has also adapted to technology where people can now get their groceries online, whereas that wasn't something that was possible five years ago. So what's going on in the world? What's going on with the environment where we need to adjust things so our strategy will still work effectively? Great. So I know we've got a, a couple more points that you're going to be making. Uh, I do want to invite uh, participants, if you do have a question for Canada, we are going to have a Q&A section at the end of um, today's session. So feel free to post your questions in the Q&A panel or in the chat, and uh, we'll do our best to get to them today. Great. Thank you, Christina. Um, again, something that came up earlier in this webinar was about the importance of employee engagement. That's a term that we hear quite a lot about how can you engage employees? How can you make sure that everybody is on board? And what we want to talk about here is the idea that linking the strategy and the employee engagement. So how do you get employees to be part of that? How do you get them involved, aligned, feel satisfied by it? And what I wanted to introduce here, you can see on the screen, is the Build a Better Workplace model that was research done by Canadian Management Centre in partnership with Ipsos Reid to better understand employee engagement and the drivers that make the most impact on employee engagement. So this was surveyed across Canadians across the country in different sectors, different levels within an organization, and it highlights the connection between strategy and employee engagement. So what's important here is to look at strategy implementation. When you're implementing implementing strategy, employees want to participate in the implementation. They want to see the visible progress towards strategic goals. They want to be involved. If you want to have strong employee engagement, then you need to communicate effectively. You need to get them to be part of that whole implementation process. You can see how communication by senior leadership, by your leader, by all leaders, and if, if you notice, there's some great terms that are on this employee engagement um, to build a better workplace, where you look at meaningful communication. So again, the, it, communication is great, but it has to be meaningful, and it has to be communication of the organizational objectives, of where we're going, why we're here, what our goals are. And if you talk to your employees, and if you involve people right from the beginning stages, that will work towards greater engagement in the long run. And it will also get them to feel part of that strategy, which is what you want to do. What we really appreciate about this um, model, Candida, is the, the drivers that are located on the outside. You know, move, make, moving the dial on employee engagement and actually getting your employees to be loyal and committed to the organization. Um, these drivers, if you flex on them, you can see an immediate impact on the actual engagement of employees. And 
you can see at the core of the, the model um, in that gray shaded area, there's a reference to loyalty, and that's an employee's intent to stay with the organization based on how engaged they are and what they're also able to contribute. But this is also about tapping into the total talent of your team. Um, and I know that we've got many people on the line today who are, who are already there with us. They want to find ways to be able to do that. Um, but this is a great visual reference to be able to share with leaders inside your organization or your HR and, and organizational development groups as well, um, because you can see the direct connection to strategy implementation and the necessity for communication, and as you said, meaningful communication. Great. And there's a great, uh, great impact of the employee engagement, which is employees need to know how their work connects with where the organization is headed to feel motivated and to want to contribute more. So involving them by everything that's listed here on the employee engagement will create a more motivated and more successful work environment. Let's transition to take a look at a couple of communicating, communicating strategy tips or, strategy, or tips for communicating strategy. Yeah, and again, uh, communication is one of those points that I always say that if you have three people in a room or three people at a meeting, and they all leave that meeting, I bet those three people will have heard different things. So we need to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So how can you make sure that people are communicating effectively and communicating their strategy effectively? So first of all, the phrase communicate early and often. So if uh, there is no such thing as uh, oh, I, I told you that too early, is communicate early. Let people know what is going on. What happens if you don't communicate? Guess what? That's where that rumor mill starts to happen around you. And people will be communicating whether you like it or not. And when they're communicating, they might be saying things that you don't want them to say. So if you communicate early, if you communicate often, then everybody will be up to date and nobody will be circling around that rumor mill to figure out what's going on. As I said, employee engagement is crucial and involving them in that strategy early and often is very effective. Well, it's just going to connect to the fact again that change and disruption have been mentioned uh, a few times in our, our time together today. And um, you know, communicating early and often when you're going through a change uh, quite often are a desire might be to wait until we have all the information to share, but that only serves to create a little bit more anxiety um, within our employee base and the uncertainty and ambiguity. I was working with a company recently that did did try that. They, they were It was a global organization, and their head office, which was in another country, kept saying, well, we don't want to tell them anything until we've got everything completely sorted out. Well, I was in the other country, and the people were saying, why aren't they telling us anything? What's really going on? And it really created such a rift between the two different countries and the, the way that the organization was working that if they had just said to them early on, this is where we are right now, we haven't finished everything yet, and we will communicate as we get closer to it, people would have felt more willing to be involved, to be engaged, to be motivated. But when they don't hear anything, that's where the problems happen. Another tip that's really important is to make sure that you tailor your message. So again, using the right language for the right people. Depending on who your message is for, what you want to make sure is that you're communicating in a way that they understand, that they want to be talked to, and that they can pass on to other people the message that you are passing on to them. So people need to know what, what will work best for them, and, and when you're communicating, you need to figure out the way that's going to suit them best in order to make sure that they understand what that message is. By tailoring your delivery, you're going to have a much stronger impact rather than what some organizations think is a generic one-will-fit-all model, because we are all different, and therefore some people like to be told things Ten times, they like to be told things in different large groups, small groups, just their team. So figure out what, how that message will be most effective to the people that you are communicating it to. 
We have a comment from an attendee, uh, Philip, who uh, indicates that things fail when it comes to communications and a lot of assumptions are made, or the attitude is that if you don't know, ask. So how can you ask a question if you're not even aware of what to ask? So, you know, I like that reference of, you know, sometimes we don't know what we don't know, but I think um, as it relates to questions coming forward, if you're a leader who's creating a relationship with your employees and they're asking questions, that creates an opportunity to share those questions up inside of an organization to give them evidence of a trail on, on what questions are going to need to be answered, what's on the mind of employees, what should they be thinking about. Yeah, and I always think if I've talked to a large group of people and nobody has any questions, then they didn't hear what I said. People should always have questions. So it's important for one, for you to ask those questions, but it's also important if you are passing on a message to think, why didn't anybody ask any questions? What might I have missed? What questions should they be asking? What else can I say to them? There's well, sorry, I was going to say, well, and I think in some cases, creating the safety for those questions to come forward, right? So that people feel that they can ask questions without uh, judgment or without fear. Absolutely. And there was a great point that somebody said here, which is the sad part is that management thought they were communicating and engaging their employees. And that's a very good point is oftentimes if nobody is saying anything or they do a generic one-fits-all model, they're not really hearing what employees are saying underneath. And so it's important in that communication strategy to make sure that you are communicating early, often, and using the right mode. And, and I would also add to that is tailor your message, use many different modes of communication. One alone is not going to work. going to come us bring us full circle back to um, to VUCA in terms of understanding how this is all going to connect so I'm sure that when you looked at VUCA the first time you thought oh boy volatility uncertainty complexity ambiguity that's the story of what's going on in my environment so let's look at VUCA a little bit differently now and think we can change the the words to V is for vision U for understanding C for clarity and a for adaptability so the first thought there is, instead of having that volatility, vision. And right from the beginning of any strategic thinking class or strategic planning or communicating strategy is, what is the vision? What is the big picture? What are you actually trying to say and do? So having a vision is the first step towards creating a successful and effective strategy. So once you have that vision, how do you make sure that other people understand that vision? So the understanding is very important. Uncertainty happens when people misinterpret. I think there were words that have come up today have been the assumptions that people make, the biases that people have, and all of these come from not understanding what is meant. So that understanding comes from very clear, very effective communication looking at things, tailoring it, uh, uh, communicating uh, as much as possible on the terms that need to be communicated towards your strategy. Clarity, making sure that you have a clear and, uh, a clear and successful and effective way to pass that message along. So looking at the language that you're using, making sure that it's clear and coming from multiple perspectives, when we looked at the strategic planning tips, Talking to people who have a multiple perspective, looking at things a different way, can make things a lot more clear. You might think, this is very clear to me, but it won't be clear to somebody else. So having that clarity is very important. And adaptability. Everybody speaks a little bit differently. And something I learned, and I'm sure everybody here has discovered it in some form, that people are different. People look at things differently, people learn things differently, people hear things differently. So making sure when you're thinking about your strategy, about that strategic thinking, that strategic planning, and communicating that strategy, how can I make sure that it's adapting? Adapting to the people, adapting to the environment, and adapting for the organization that I'm working in. 
So I think as we um, start to move into uh, identifying ways to be able to support you with this, one question that we do have for you as we move into our strategic planning mode at CMC is to give us a sense of what other webinar topics you're interested in um, that are going to support and enable you in your roles. Uh, so we do strive to bring new insights to you, so we'd really welcome your engagement on the, in the chat panel to give us some feedback on um, whether web, other webinar topics you might be interested in um, that we might be able to support you with. So it certainly could be connected into uh, strategic planning, developing a strategic mindset, and, and implementing some of what we've talked about today, but um, we'd love to hear from you and to get your insights. So again, just go ahead and, and put them into the chat panel and uh, let us know uh, what we can do to better support you. Um, so we do also have some questions that are coming in, Candida. I'm going to shift us into that uh, component of um, the session. And again, welcome people to ask any questions in the chat panel as well as in the Q&A panel. So Candida, one person asking that as a manager, how can I help my employees to be more strategic? So there's a few things to that is I ask you as a manager, if you really want the people on your team to think more strategically, you have to make sure that they have the time and that you allocate time for that and so that they're not rushed off and firefighting the whole time and that you really mean it. Because I think a lot of people say they want people to think strategically, but the, you need to be able to say it and communicate it to your team in such a way that so they understand what that actually means. So what would help them to think more strategically is the more you can communicate what the vision, what the big picture, what the direction of the organization is, and you can have team meetings where you talk about that and get them involved, the more that they will be motivated and realize that you actually do want them to think strategically. So I think it is explaining to them exactly what that means and how it will help you and it will help the organization so they feel more part of it. Great suggestions. Um, another uh, person asking about the, um, indicating that they understand the importance of being strategic, but coming back again to how do I make the time? Yeah, time is something that we, we all have the same amount of time per day. And how do you make the time? That's about being proactive. So there are many different time management tools. And again, we do courses where we get involved in getting you to, to manage your time more effectively. But even in the course where, um, which, which I run on developing a strategic mindset, step one is making sure you have the time. And it's about prioritizing effectively. You need to make sure that you prioritize the time to think strategically. Because if you just put it in your little diary of your to-do list that today I'm going to try to think strategically, guess what? Everything else will overtake that because of the firefighting. But you have to exact. You have to say this is a priority. I need to be proactive, and I'm going to think strategically for X amount of time per week. And give yourself permission to take that time out of your daily day, day to day operational work, to start to think strategically. And one of the great tools that you learn when you take the uh, strategic courses here is a step process. The step process of what are the first second and third thing you need to do to start the process in your mind because it is a mindset. To think strategically, you have to give yourself permission and you have to say, yes, I can think strategically. And here is the process that I'm going to do to get there. And so a follow-on uh, question from that um, coming in from Michael is asking the question about how do you drive strategy? You know, and, and I guess we've, we've also got a question from somebody else who is an employee who wants to know what their role is, like how does a strategic skill set fit into their role as an employee? Is it a, a leader-only club? Absolutely not. And I think you'll find that the leaders um, would, would gain and be very happy to hear the ideas. But again, every organization is different. And every organization, it's a matter of making sure that the organization is ready for you to think strategically. So number one is to ask the questions. And if, if you're not sure whether they want you to think too much strategically, you know, uh, again, because some people are scared if they just throw out any idea at a meeting. But if you start asking the questions, such as where are we going, where do we, where do we 
want to be in five years? What are the things that we can look at? What can I add to the business? Starting to think about those questions and asking those questions will make the leaders look at you and think, you're a person who's thinking about our future, and that's a good thing. So the suggestion had come in from Lori coming back to our how do I make time to be more strategic, um, indicating that, you know, and I'm assuming, Lori, you block time in your calendar that you can own some time in your day that is going to allow you to either be focused on core projects or to be focused more on the strategy. But I think um, it's interesting that one of the topics that came up as a, a webinar topic of interest is delegation strategies because often mm -hmm. as leaders, we've got to offload some stuff to our team members, which is going to develop and stretch them, um, but also free up some time so that you can do some of that heavy lifting work and, and at a time in your day too where you're going to have fresh thinking. Absolutely. There's that whole rule about time is whatever you're doing, it will fill the time that you have. So if you want to add time to your day, then you have to make sure that you block the time to do the other things that you want to do. And you have to say that they're important to me, that strategic thinking and strategic planning is important, not it's just something that I might do if I ever have the time. And by starting that route, you'll discover that it becomes easier and it becomes a more, uh, a more regular part of your day or week or month. So uh, if you are, if you do have a goal for yourself to become more strategic in 2018, we are going to be running a webinar connected into goal setting um, that will give you an opportunity to take a look at some strategies to build a, really a focused plan around some of your goals and how you can actually uh, achieve that and get to that point. Um, so it looks like we've got um, a few more questions that are coming in, Canada. We are running short on time. Um, I'm going to wrap up here with a question from Ruth, which is um, indicating that I find that I do bring lots of options to the table, but I can't get anyone to agree on one thing, or it might be over-discussed, it seems. So how do I make it move? How can I help to advance the planning process? What I find as a useful tip to that is make them realize how this is a benefit to them. So if you want something to move, you need to say why it will what benefit it's bringing to the table. Because people love to discuss things and throw things out there. But if you start with saying, I think that this will make us into a much stronger organization if we do this, then people are thinking, ah, this is useful to me. This is a benefit to me. So instead of just starting with, I've got some ideas, say why these ideas have even been brought out in the first place. Because everybody likes to know things that are going to benefit them and benefit the organization. So it's that old phrase, what's in it for me, or what's in it for the organization. That's one approach I find most effective. I think that that is an excellent strategy, particularly in a, a time where there's so much noise around us, and it seems like we're all swept up in our respective to-dos. Answering that what's in it for me or what's in it for the organization helps create a sense of urgency and, and attentiveness. Absolutely. Uh, so I do want to draw your attention um, to three courses that we have connected to the topic um, that we've discussed today. So one is on developing a strategic mindset, an amazing program for those of you who are looking to build the skills to try and integrate this into your day-to-day. -day. Um, strategic planning from vision to action is a two-day program that goes deeper into the strategic planning process, so it sets you up to contribute to that process or to drive it in your organization. And then communicating your strategy, it looks like there was a lot of opportunity from what we talked about today. This is about taking an existing strategy inside your organization and helping to get buy-in and commitment to it. So, so, so critical um, to organizations and seems to be a big um, tipping point for um, the outperforming organizations that we work with. The difference for them over others is that they do have the ability to really hone that strategy and communicate it into the organizations that they serve. Um, or clients that they serve, rather. I do want to invite you to uh, check out our website for additional um, dates on those programs, but also for any free resources connected into this topic. Um, the reality check report, my colleague Jen did send a link out to that. We encourage you to take a look at that as it relates to managing the impact of change in your workplace. And do want to invite those of you who are looking to uh, report um, or track PDUs for today's session, uh, you can um, record, report for one uh, PDU uh, in the strategic category um, as it relates to your PMP uh, designation. Candidate, you have shared so much uh, with us in one hour. I want to thank you so much for your time and uh, the insights and experience that you've shared. 
I think we've got some uh, great and useful insights, and I'm sure many Thank of the you. participants today will look forward to seeing you in one of the sessions. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. That brings us to the end of today's session. Um, please feel free to disconnect. <laughs>